Hello everybody, my name is Anna and I am Ukrainian who is currently living with her half-British family in a tiny Bulgarian village. We moved here after the war broke out in Ukraine. Today I'm going to show you a bit of our daily life and take you for a walk to Velika Tirnovo, which is an ancient Bulgarian capital. I'm going to dwell on a bit about uh, what it, does it take for a city citizen to live in a rural area and don't have any expectations. So, let's go! That's how usually our morning starts. Naomi wakes up at around 7 and enjoys time with her mommy. Soon her dad wakes up. And the little pig said, no, no, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, I won't let you in. And the big bad wolf said, well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he puffed 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 until he had no breath left. And the house was still standing because it was made out of bricks and it was very, very strong. Tortilla wraps are one of my favorite dishes for breakfast. I like to use some leftovers like rice and chicken from the day before, add some greens and avocado and cheese uh, and also baked beans. It's good with some homemade kimchi as well. I fell in love with kimchi when I lived in Korea. It's so spicy and juicy and I started to make it at home. It's always good in dishes. I understand why Koreans eat it every day. I put everything in, wrap it and toast them on the dry frying pan. You know, I was born in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine with almost 4 million population and most of my life I lived there, so I'm used to big city life. Although I lived in a residential area next to the forest, I always could jump in the metro and find myself in the bustling city. Now we've been here in a Bulgarian little village for almost 4 months. Several times a week we go to shop in Gabrovo, a little town 20 minutes drive from here and occasionally go for a walk to Vlikaternovo. Vlikaternovo is a town with a population of approximately 70,000 people. It's one of the oldest towns in the country and it was established almost 5,000 years ago. The expansion of Velikotarnova, or Velikotarnova as they pronounce it in English, is related to the period of the Second Bulgarian Empire and it was in 1185 that the town was declared the capital of the restored Bulgarian state by the brothers Asen and Petar. Mm -hmm. 
There are lots of souvenir shops and there are many artists and craft makers and um, woodworkers and uh, it's just nice to walk around and uh, gaze at the windows and at the people who work and right on the street. This area has an attraction of a southern relaxed little town when people don't hurry and enjoy life. There is a hotel called Kiev, uh, which is a Bulgarian transcription of um, Kyiv, the Ukrainian name for the capital of Ukraine. Just dropped in to check out the interior. It has nothing to do with Kiev, by the way. The biggest attraction in Viti is a medieval fortress called Tsarevets. It's located on the hill with the same name and surrounded on three sides by the river Yantra. So, what does it mean to stay in such a tiny place after living in the city? I have a weird, controversial feeling, to be honest. On the one hand, time flies super fast and I just blink with my eyes and whoosh, another week is gone by. On the other hand, we are in a situation not all people would like to experience. I would say nobody would like to. It's our house, but we were pushed into changing our lifestyle because of the war that Russia started in Ukraine in February. At the moment, no one of us works to make money and we don't know where we're gonna end up. We live in a state of uncertainty. What's gonna happen in Ukraine and the rest of the world? When will we be able to come back? Where are we gonna spend this winter? Will our apartment in Kyiv be there when we come back? Many questions, but no answers. So we live here and now, enjoying our little commune as much as we can. It's fun and also helpful in many ways. There's always somebody who can play with kids while another is busy with their stuff. There's always a friend to talk to. To be honest, I felt more lonely during the first year Naomi was born, when Peter worked and I was by myself from Kiev with the baby. Although I must admit, sometimes I really miss the city life. I especially like the opportunity to visit exhibitions and going out for a meal, or take a stroll in city parks watching people. I have two sides. One is really domestic and enjoys uh, cooking and staying at home and making everything cozy and spending time with the kid and uh, with my family and, you know, uh, just being a housewife and enjoying a book uh, in a chair with a cup of tea, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, another, my side is pretty wild and can't live without traveling 
without adventures, without risking a bit and this part of me is sleeping at the moment. Sleeping or just resting and waiting for the moment to come because when they are not in balance, these two sides of me, I lose my comfort and I need to balance them out all the time. And now I don't have uh, a lot of uh, opportunities to nourish my wild side. <laughs> Although there is also another part of me which observes these first two parts and I would call it a mature persona that understands that everything will go by and pretty soon, when sooner than we expect sometimes and it's nothing to be sad about or nothing to be happy about it's just as it is, it's a fact So to sum it up, I'm happy to be here with my family and friends. I'm torn apart when I get to know news from Ukraine every day and a part of me stays calm and observes everything. I would call it a Buddhist way. I'm not religious, but this angle of thinking appeals to me. There's a road.